Hi, Sammy. How are you? Fine. What? You sure don't sound very fine. What's the matter? I just got the email saying that the Easter egg hunt this year is canceled. Well, there's a lot of things canceled this year. I know, but now I'm sitting around all dressed up and no place to go. Well, that's a little too sad. I, I do get it, Sammy. But You know, there's no better way to spend a Saturday afternoon than to be out on the field being crushed by the crowds as you try to catch all the candy on the ground. Actually, there's probably lots of better ways to spend a Saturday afternoon. Last time, my hands got stepped on, my head got stepped on, my foot got stepped on, and some kid kicked me and went flying across the eggs. Well, that... now I just have to sit around the house bored with my bunny soap. Well, it's kind of cute. Yeah, especially now that we have to do all the hand washing. At least I have soap. You do. What else do you have? My Easter mug. Ah! That's kind of scary. And leftover chocolates from last year. I hope they're not too stale. Hopefully they're not. But Sammy... I, I know that you're a little disappointed, and I think lots of our boys and girls would be disappointed this year. Lots of families disappointed because lots of people won't be able to get together like every other year. But there's more to Easter than just Easter bunnies, chocolates, and eggs. There is? Yes, Sammy. No way. Yes, there is. And guess what? We go through this every year. I keep forgetting. Well... Easter is about more than chocolates, bunnies, and eggs. Easter is about Jesus and how he died on the cross for our sins. Yeah, maybe that's good for some people, but I ain't done nothing bad. Well, maybe one thing. Two? Three? Okay, 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 okay. Well, Sammy... We have a story to read today about Easter, and it'll help remind you about some of the things that we can be thankful for and how wonderful Easter really is, whether we can spend it with other people or not, because it's more than just about other people and our friends and family. It's about Jesus. Okay, I'm looking forward to a story. I know the book is called The Easter Story for Children and Puppets. Worried for a second. Yeah, and it's by Max Lucado and Randy Fraze and Karen Davis Hill. And the person that did the pictures, the illustrator, is by Fausto Bianchi. Jesus was a very busy man. He worked hard to spread the word of his father and how much God loves his people. Jesus' ministry had grown strong. His disciples loved him. The people gathered in great crowds to hear him preach. They loved him too. But not everyone was a follower of Jesus. Some people were not sure about what he said. Some priests were angry because Jesus claimed to be the Son of God. Some rulers were not sure what Jesus meant when he talked about a kingdom. Jesus knew then that it was time for his work and time on earth to be over. As Jesus and his 12 disciples sat around the table to share the Passover meal, Jesus told his friends this would be their last meal together and that a difficult time was coming. I don't know if I could handle a last dinner. I'm already thinking about the next meal. I, I know you are. But this is a special story, Sammy. Then he took a loaf of bread, blessed it, tore it into pieces, and shared it with everyone at the table. Jesus told them that the bread was like his own body that would be given for them. Eat this to remember me, he said. Jesus took a cup of wine, blessed it, and shared it with the disciples. This cup of wine is a reminder of my promise to be your savior, he said. 
Then Jesus told them something that made them very sad. One of you will turn against me and will give me to my enemies. <gasps> Who was it? Well, let's find out. Is it me? Each one asked. I would never do that, Peter protested. Jesus said, Peter, I'm sorry to tell you, but before morning, you will deny me that you know me three times before the rooster crows. Not once, not twice, but three times? Yes. Later that night, Jesus walked to the Mount of Olives, where there was a peaceful garden. He knelt down and prayed to his Father in heaven. He asked God to give him the courage to face the troubles ahead. When his prayer time was over, Jesus rejoined the disciples. Suddenly, a crowd of angry men showed up, the high priests, temple police, and leaders. One of Jesus' disciples, named Judas Iscariot, was with the bad men. He walked over to Jesus and kissed him. That was the signal the leader, to the leaders that Jesus was the one they wanted to arrest. Judah, Judas was the traitor. Oh, the plot thickens. Yeah. Rattling swords and marching feet broke the quiet in Jerusalem that night. Soldiers and temple leaders hustled Jesus through the dark, sleeping city. They had Jesus tied up. They were taking him to see the city leaders, those people who did not like Jesus and his messages of love. Who couldn't like Jesus? Well, there were a lot of people back then that didn't. Each time the soldiers and Jesus turned a corner, Peter darted from behind a building. What are those soldiers going to do to Jesus? Where are they taking my Lord? If they see me, will they arrest me too? Peter wondered. The soldiers pushed through a gate and into the courtyard of the house where the high priest waited for the prisoner. Peter was close enough to watch and hear what was about to happen. He sat near the fire where the others had gathered. Peter pulled his robe over his head, hoping no one would see his face. A servant girl recognized Peter. You're with him, she said, pointing to Jesus. No, no, I don't even know that man, Peter lied. The soldiers began to make fun of Jesus, hitting and treating him badly. A soldier sitting near Peter said, aren't you one of his disciples? Peter said, I don't know what you're talking about. The high priest began asking Jesus questions. Jesus answered, everything I've done has been set out in the open for all to see. I've taught and ministered, but not in secret. Why are you treating me like this? Just then a soldier noticed Peter near the fire. I saw you in the garden with Jesus. You were one of his disciples, he said. Peter denied it. Not me, he said. Then the courtyard rooster crowed his morning call. <gasps> Jesus said that was going to happen. He did. The sound of the rooster reminded Peter's, Peter of Jesus' words. You will deny me three times before the rooster crows. Peter ran out of the courtyard. He cried and cried, disappointed with himself for not being true to Jesus. People packed the streets of Jerusalem to look at Jesus. The word was all over town. Jesus had been condemned to die. He had been beaten, spit on, and made fun of. Now the soldiers whipped him, forcing him to march to the place where he would be executed. What's executed? They were going to kill him. The followers of Jesus wanted him saved from the terrible punishment. Men shouted, women cried, children were sad and upset. In the middle of all the turmoil, Jesus struggled under the weight of the heavy wooden cross he was forced to carry. 
There was nothing anyone could do. Nothing? The soldiers pounded huge nails through the hands and feet of Jesus into the cross. They raised the cross with Jesus on it and stuck it into the ground. There Jesus hung for hours in great pain. Two criminals hung on crosses next to him. Many people who loved Jesus were there for him, but many other people made fun of Jesus as he suffered. If he's the son of God, as he says, let him save himself, they laughed. One of the criminals made fun of him too, but the other criminal believed Jesus was God's son. When your kingdom comes, will you save me? He asked Jesus, and Jesus promised to save him. The painful punishment continued for hours. Jesus' mother and disciples watched, filled with sadness at his suffering. Soon, the sun stopped shining. Darkness was all around. Then Jesus cried out, It is finished, and he died. Friends of Jesus took his body and buried it in a tomb. Was that the end of Jesus? Was that the end of the story? That's a pretty sad story for Easter. It's not the end of the story, Sam. It was a sad time for all the disciples and the friends of Jesus. They cried for him and prayed together. But Jesus had one more amazing miracle to accomplish. He had told the disciples about this miracle, but they had not understood at the time. The best was yet to come. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm getting excited. So three days passed. There was pain and sadness and crying. The disciples wondered if they would be in trouble too, but nothing happened to them. So Jesus' friends knew they had more to do. At that time, when someone died, the women poured good-smelling oils on the body and wrapped it in a nice burial cloth. So Mary Magdalene, Salome, Joanna, and Mary, James' mother, headed for the tomb on Sunday morning to take care of Jesus' body. On the way, they began to talk about the tomb and what they would do when they arrived. Who will roll away the big, heavy stone for us? One of the women asked. But when they arrived, the stone had already been moved from the tomb's entrance. <gasps> How did that happen? We're going to find out. Mary Magdalene ran ahead and peeked inside. He's gone, she shouted. Our Lord is gone. Look, the burial garments are still here, neatly folded up. Don't be afraid, spoke a calm, quiet voice from the tomb. Mary Magdalene looked again and saw an angel. I know you're looking for Jesus. He's not here. He was raised from the dead, just as he promised. Now go and tell the others he is risen, the angel said. Running back to the house where the disciples had gathered, the women couldn't wait to share the great news about the Savior. But on the way... The women encountered still another surprise. No, I can't take any more surprises. What was it? They ran into Jesus himself. Good morning, Jesus said as he smiled at his friends. Lord, the women cried joyfully, dropping down to their knees and worshiping the Son of God. Go and tell the others I'll meet them in Galilee, Jesus said. The women got up and did as Jesus told them. The Lord is risen, they said over and over again as they hurried to meet the disciples and share the amazing news. Later, the disciples argued and discussed Mary Magdalene's remarkable news. I saw Jesus raised from the dead, she had told them over and over. As they talked about this wonderful news, Jesus suddenly appeared in the locked room. The disciples were shocked. 
The last time they saw him, he was dead. And now he's not dead, right? Right, that's the beauty about Easter. Peace be to you, Jesus said. He showed them the nail scars on his hands. He showed them the side of his body that had been cut by the soldier's sword. When the disciples realized the person in front of them really was Jesus, they were very happy. Mary had been right, and Jesus was happy to be with his friends again. He gave them a special blessing and told them he had a big job for them to do. Jesus explained to the disciples, I want you to tell everyone about the blessing that I came to give, forgiveness and life eternal for everyone who believes in me. Soon, the Father will send the Holy Spirit to help you and give you strength and power. Though the disciples didn't understand everything, they understood Jesus had done what he had said. He had died and was alive again. The disciples knew that they had been chosen to do an important job. And what a job they had to do! But they were not alone. The disciples had Jesus with them for a little while longer. Jesus continued to teach them and spend time with them, and one day he went up to heaven. For a while after Jesus left them, his followers stayed together and prayed. They waited in Jerusalem for the power of the Holy Spirit to come. They had no idea when this would happen or what it would be like, so they prayed and gave thanks until it was time. The Holy Spirit came just as God promised through his Son. The Spirit's comfort brought them peace. The Spirit's power filled them with courage. The disciples were able to perform miracles in God's name. And they went out to tell the world that the Messiah had come. The end! Actually, Sammy, it's not the end. It's the beginning, the beginning of something new that Jesus did for us when he rose from the dead. That's why Easter's so exciting. And that's why it's kind of sad when we get so caught up in the Easter bunny and eggs and Easter egg hunts that sometimes we forget what was so important and how much Jesus loved us and that he died on the cross for us. So I hope next time when we're thinking about Easter and you're starting to get a little bit sad because we can't do some of the things we normally do, that you'll remember all the things that Jesus did for you and it'll make you happy. I'm so glad to know this and it will make a difference, especially when we can't do some of the things we've been planning to do all along. And I have to just have Easter dinner with you. That's not so bad. I guess. All right. Well, thanks for joining us and learning a little bit more about what Easter really means. And we pray that you have a wonderful Easter holiday and be blessed. And we will catch up with you next time. Goodbye. Say bye, Sammy. Bye, Sammy. No, no. Say goodbye to all your friends. Bye, everybody. Bye.